Hello everybody. I'm so excited to share with you a wonderful Thanksgiving event. It's gonna be the most amazing food and wine bearing you have ever witnessed. So join me, it's gonna be a delicious afternoon. My name is John McDaniel and I'm extremely excited to welcome you to this special event of Thanksgiving and Rosé wine pairings. I'm incredibly enthusiastic to bring you the legendary chef live from his test kitchen here in Los Angeles, Chef Wolfgang Puck. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. You know, and I love Rosé. I used to live in Provence. Yeah. I used to work at Beaumaniere, one of the most famous restaurants. And I was friends with a lot of producers there. So to me, rosé is a staple. And you know, often people think rosé is for the summer. Mm -hmm. Now it's great if you're in Saint-Tropez on the beach and you drink rosé, but you can drink it all year round. And I actually like to serve it for some people who actually don't know, do they want white wine or red wine? Right. And you know, Obviously, rosé has red grapes. I don't know exactly. You will tell me what grapes in, are in there, if it's Movero or whatever they have in there. Mm -hmm. And I think to just marinate them a little bit, or, you know, and I think it goes well with food because the rosé Provence, more than any rosés, have a perfect balance of acidity and fruit. Wonderful. Well, we look forward to pairing uh, all of your amazing Thanksgiving dishes with the wines of Chateau de Bern and Ultimate Provence. We have Chateau de Bern Romance, Chateau de Bern inspiration, and of course the estate wine from Ultimate Provence. Throughout this tasting, we'll show you why exactly the wines of Southern France, specifically of Provence, are such an amazing food pairing, such amazing wines for this time of year. You can get all of these wines at some of our friends, including wine.com and some local grocers, especially on the West Coast. So stay tuned as we bring you Chateau de Bern, Ultimate Provence, and the dishes of Chef Wolfgang Puck. Now, Chef, I know we have an amazing menu planned yep. for Thanksgiving that you're going to cook for us. Why don't you tell us some of the dishes you're going to be preparing? Well, we're going to make a delicious butternut squash soup. Everybody loves a good hot soup, especially yeah. if you're out in Chicago and in Indianapolis or somewhere mm -hmm. in the Middle West. But even here at home, you know, I love a good soup and I eat soup a lot. I uh, was born like that, maybe. Uh -huh. you know. Then we're going to have a beautiful roasted turkey with sage butter. What I'm gonna do is stuff the turkey with the sage butter underneath the skin, so to make oh, it wow. really soft and really also not dry. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna make some great mm -hmm. side dishes. We're gonna make a sweet potato puree. We're gonna have some braised red cabbage. We're gonna have some honey glazed carrots with it. Cranberry relish, there we without go. cranberry relish, there is no Thanksgiving uh -huh. turkey. And then, we're gonna make a delicious gravy. I'm gonna show you how to make a great gravy because that's important too, mm -hmm. especially if you make mashed potatoes or things like that. Absolutely, and also, you know, pairing wine with desserts also very important. What do we have for dessert today? Oh, for dessert, we're gonna have a delicious apple pie. We're gonna have a pecan pie. We're gonna have a chocolate pie. You know what? It's your imagination what you like the best. Like, I love apple pies. Why? Because they're in season now. They're sure. delicious. Now, a lot of people make pumpkin pies, sweet potato pie. It's more a southern uh, team, really. But I love apple pie and chocolate is my favorite. Let's start with the turkey. We brined our turkey overnight in a salt brine with some uh, peppers in it and some cloves in it a little sugar in it, so that way it's going to be much more moist. You know, everybody loves a turkey, but generally it's dry. Brining it helps to keep it moist. So I'm going to roast it on a rack. You see this is a V-rack here, and here we have our roasting pan. But I'm going to add some mirepoix, which is onions, carrots, and celery, and maybe some herbs to the bottom of my pan. Here we go. Oh, and, and I have Chef Andrew with me here. Come over here, Andrew. You know, the most important thing is have somebody really good with you in the kitchen. If they clean up, you need somebody to chop things. Don't do everything yourself. And I think 
cooking should be a collaboration. The whole family should work on it. So that's really the most fun. All right. Here we have this. Do we have a few sage branches or something like that? Okay, throw them in here too. So that will also give moisture to our turkey. So it's really great and flavor for the gravy. We're going to add a little olive oil to it. Andrew is doing a few sage branches. And now my secret. You can see the turkey here. We're going to need the onions for our red cabbage after. Okay, that's enough. All right, so let's put the turkey over here. And then we're going to put our thing here. Where did you open it up? Over here. See that here? The skin. Put your hand underneath and open the skin here. It's almost like you would make a Peking duck. And here I have butter mixed with sage and salt and pepper. And I'm going to put that right underneath the skin here. So that fat, normally the turkey breast is very lean, but the butter will keep the turkey breast nice and moist and juicy. So finish it all. No leftover. We don't need them. Maybe a little bit down next to the legs also. All right. So I brine the turkey overnight so I don't really need to salt in it. Because if I add too much salt, you know, brine is salt, so you don't need any salt. Okay, we roast the turkey. And we started at about 300 degrees. I started slowly. Why? Because if you brown it too much, then it's hard to keep the color just right. So we started in a lower oven and then heat it up at the end. All right, we're going to put the turkey right in here. And you can see I put it sideways. Often you get turkeys which are really dry on top because the heat in the oven comes from the top. You want to start your turkey sideways. And I said if you don't brine it, obviously put some fresh ground pepper on it. Because you want to season it, because turkey meat by itself is bland, so put salt and pepper. We always use fresh ground pepper, all right? Now we're going to put a little oil on top. And we'll start it just like that. Let's put that in the oven. Often when you buy the turkey, they say it's about 15 to 20 minutes per pound. To me, it's a little bit much. 15 minutes is more than enough. Then keep it in the warm place because the turkey will continue to cook. And that way you have a juicier end product. Andrew, we have to strain our turkey juice out of here. All right. Now I'm going to heat it up. The gravy is an important part, you mm -hmm. know. Let's taste that. Now, if you have too much gravy here, you can reduce it a little bit. Okay, let's turn it on high. Mm, pretty good. It will emulsify, but we have to add some salt and some fresh ground pepper. So now, let's start with the soup. All right, and here we are making our butternut squash soup. I have some onions, some butternut squash, some carrots in here. And the seasoning is really important. So let's add some fresh ginger. If you don't have fresh ginger, powdered ginger will do. And I'm going to add a stick of cinnamon or cinnamon powder. Salt and pepper. We're going to add some stock, or you can add water. If you don't have any vegetable stock or chicken stock, add water. We are lucky if you have a little stock here, but we're going to need a little more. All right, so we're going to cook that for a little while. We're going to taste it if we have enough salt and pepper in here. Mm, good already. Might need a little more stock. All right, and now I'm making the garnish for my soup. These are some pumpkin seeds, which we toast. So how do we toast it? We put it in a little saute pan and just saute it. 
If you toast the pumpkin seeds, they are so much better. They are crunchy and they have a lot of flavor. The toasted flavor is really delicious. In Austria, where I grew up, we toast the pumpkin seed and then we make oil with it, pumpkin seed oil. And I'm gonna show it to you in a little bit. All right, you bring the soup to a boil and let it simmer gently. So that way, the carrots are cooked, the onions are cooked, and obviously your butternut squash has to be cooked. When we have our butternut squash soup done, you can serve it in a regular soup bowl, but we baked some squash here and gonna fill it up in this squash cups. See them? You also can use any kind of squash you like. Now I'm gonna give you a little secret. If you have butternut squash, which is not too sweet, add a little touch of honey. Voila. And a little lemon juice to balance it. Just like wine, the soup has to have the right balance of sweetness and acidity. Now, if you like spices, you can make it spicier or not spicier, it's okay. So we can see our carrots and butternut squash and the onions are all cooked now. Our pumpkin seeds are toasted. You can see them, how oily they get. That's how they, why they make pumpkin seed oil. It has a lot of oil in it. And the toasts are really delicious. I eat them just having a glass of rosé and my pumpkin seeds toasted. It's delicious. And with the help of a mixer or a blender, whatever you have, you can puree your soup. I'm going to turn down the heat here, and we're going to taste it for salt and pepper. Needs a little salt, but it's not bad. I know people will love it. A little bit more pepper. And I'm going to give it a tad more sweetness. A little touch of honey. Okay, and a little bit more lemon juice. It's a little on the thick side, so we're gonna add a little more vegetable stock here. And continue to pureeing. Presentation is really important. You wanna make your food look good because we eat first with our eyes. So, here we have our roasted squash and you can fill them up with your soup. Okay, and then we're gonna sprinkle some pumpkin seeds on top. If you like a little cream, just for color or for taste, if you're a vegetarian, no cream, put a little cream on top. Put a few of our seeds on top. Another traditional way also, the way we serve it in Austria is with toasted pumpkin seed oil. You can see it's very strong, so we're gonna just put a little bit on it. So this is very strong. So here we have our beautiful butternut squash soup with beautiful pumpkin seed, cream or no cream, and a little bit of our pumpkin seed oil. Chef, this looks amazing, first of all. And you picked the exact right wine to go with this. So Chateau de Bern Romance, I think, would be perfect with the butternut squash soup. The red fruit characteristic to it, the roundness, it's really smooth and meant to be the kind of aperitif style of rosé that yeah. uh, would go really and well think, on its own. I think it would be good because the pomegranate, they have acidity and sweetness with it. So it's not overpowering, but I think it would be good. So let's try it. You want a spoon? You get a little bit of the tartness, mm -hmm. the nuttiness of the pumpkin seed. And you're, you're right, like it's incredibly balanced and then you bite into that pomegranate yeah. and that acidity, that brightness really pops. So I think the rosé is, is very similar to that kind of pomegranate of bringing out the, the red fruit flavors to it, yeah. that really nice acidity. So romance in this butternut squash soup, I think will be a perfect pairing to start off your Thanksgiving meal. I know, which means we can romance our soup now. Sounds great. All right, right. with a little rosé. All right, and now I'm making the stuffing here. 
I have some sautéed onions with a little Italian sausage, but I actually want to make a mushroom stuffing. So I have all kinds of mushrooms here, see them? Button mushrooms, shimeche, shiitake, whatever you can find, chanterelles will be fine. Now this is a great dish by itself. You can have that for brunch on Sunday if you want to, and you will love it. So first, we have to saute the mushrooms. Turn up the heat a little bit here. So you get much more flavor if you saute your mushrooms. All right, you're going to add a little salt and pepper to it. And if the mushrooms are too dry, don't worry, just add a little stock to it. I love the flavor when the sauteed onions and mushrooms all come together. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to cook the sausage, the onions, the mushrooms here. We're going to add the bread and then a little custard. So this is almost like a custard in a way. I'm going to add a little bit of cream with mixed with egg, salt, pepper, a little nutmeg, and then bake it in the oven. All right. I had a lot of leftover bread. I cut them into pieces and dried them out. Okay, and here I have my cream and egg mixture. I'm going to season it with salt and pepper. And then I'm going to grate a little bit of fresh nutmeg in here. Okay, all the good aromas, which reminds you of Thanksgiving. All right, we're gonna put it over. Now mix it well together, because we wanna have the sausage, the mushrooms, the bread, all really well mixed together. You can see how the bread is soaking up all of our custard. We are ready to bake the stuffing. All right. The oven is at 375, so it won't take too long. It really depends how much stuffing you have in your pan. So if you have it really heavy, it takes a little longer. But just take a spoon and you will see when the milk or the cream and the eggs and everything has solidified, then it's done. One of my other favorite side dishes is Brussels sprouts. Now many people boil the Brussels sprouts, they cook it, it's overcooked, it has no flavor. I'm going to show you an easy trick and how to make the best Brussels sprouts ever. Really simple, great also for vegetarian. Now, if you want to add some bacon to it, add some bacon to it. It's up to you. I have here a nice flat saute pan and I'm going to butter it. Now, you can use oil if you want to. So I'm going to generously butter it. Now, I'm going to add salt and pepper. and some brown sugar. I'm gonna add a little sugar, why? Because it helps to color the Brussels sprouts. You can see I took the outer leaf off and cut off the end. And then I'm gonna arrange them just like that. Why do I arrange it like that? You're gonna say, why you make it so nice? Well, what it is, I wanna colorize the flat side of my Brussels sprouts, the cut side here, so that way, that gonna be nice and brown and caramelized. So you get this delicious flavor. That's all there is. I put already a little salt and pepper on the bottom. If you want a little touch on top. And we're gonna turn on our stove now. On medium heat, not too hot. As soon as the butter melts, we're gonna cover it. And steam it up like that. All right. Here are our beautiful caramelized Brussels sprouts. Now I'm gonna show you how to make braised red cabbage with roasted chestnut. I have here some white wine vinegar, some sugar, and I'm gonna add a little cinnamon to it, and a little bit 
of a time spray. Add the onion. We add our chestnuts. And we finish with orange juice, no less. I'm drinking the rosé, but I also use it to cooking because I don't want to buy another bottle. This one is delicious and you know, it's important to have good wine when you cook too. So I'm going to put about a cup of the rosé wine here. Not too much because I want to have a little bit to drink after. Alright, time now to taste our red cabbage. A little salt. And a little pepper. Make sure that your chestnuts are cooked also. But mine were already roasted, so you taste one. Perfect. To bind the cabbage together with the liquid, we're gonna add a little bit of a little bit of cornstarch with a little water. And it will thicken up the juice a little bit. And then our red cabbage. With the chestnuts. Mm. I'm gonna make my cranberry chutney now. It's cranberries, fresh cranberries, orange peel, ginger, orange juice, and some rosé. So let's start with the rosé. And then I have orange juice. Brown sugar. Oh. You know, the cranberries are very tart, so it needs a lot of sugar. So it's whatever you like, brown or white one, you decide. Or you can even add some molasses or honey. Now, I have here some chopped ginger. And then a cinnamon stick. And we're going to add also a little salt and pepper. Okay, black pepper is really good with the cranberries. It tastes sweet right now, but once the cranberry is gonna explode, it's gonna be tart and sweet and all the spices. And the orange peel and the ginger and the cinnamon. Now, I love the cranberries with the turkey because they have acidity, a little sweetness, and it also goes really well with the wine. This cranberry relish is going to be perfect with the rosé and the turkey. All right, we're going to cook it until our juice is reduced and it gets thick, just like a marmalade. And then the good thing is the cranberry relish, you can make it in advance, three, four days in advance, and you still will be okay. You know, you don't have to cook everything the last moment because that's too much work. So get organized, get ready, braise your red cabbage, get ready for your stuffing. Get the turkey ready that you cook at the last moment. Andrew here is making our honey roasted carrots. So I put some olive oil into the roasting pan and I'm going to stir them up. This is an oblique cut, which means that we peeled the carrot and then we turned it as we cut it. So it's just a pretty shape. Now we're going to add a little salt and pepper. And then we're going to put them in the oven so that they roast up nice. Takes a little something off your stovetop by putting it in the oven. All right, now look at that. That's what we are looking for. A beautiful cranberry chutney here. All right, we're going to taste it. It's always important before you finish it, you taste everything. Perfect. It's not too sweet. It will also go really good with our rosé. It has the perfect balance of sweetness and with the vinegar, the sour. And the good thickness. Look at that. So that's only the cranberries in here. See, 
That you might have never done that at Thanksgiving. Bake the apples, cut them in half, core them, put a little sugar and a little butter on it, and bake them in the oven. And then fill them with your cranberry relish. Not only it looks delicious, but it tastes even better. What are we going to drink with that? Absolutely. Well, Chef, this looks amazing. And so for all these different sides, you know, it's um, really great to just have one wine that can kind of go with everything. That's what's so great about Provence Rosé. And I saw you utilizing Ultimate Provence in some of the cooking here as well. Absolutely. You know what? I think it's a great wine. And, you know, we don't going to buy really cheap wine to cook with. We want to have good wine to cook with, too. Now, I try not to use too much because I want to drink it, too. But I think a little bit it balances the food and then it ends up going well with your wine when you bear it. Wonderful, and Ultimate Provence is one of those wines that I'm smelling all these wonderful baking spices with all these different sides, especially this amazing cranberry here. Ultimate Provence has that kind of nice baking spice, still those red fruit characteristics, so it's gonna pair really well with cranberry, with Brussels sprouts, with these incredible sides that you have here in front of you. All right. Okay, Andrew, I think the turkey is ready. What is do you it? think? Yeah, I think it is, Chef. Look how beautiful. Oh, my God. Oh, that's incredible. Look at that. Over. All right, put it right here. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Excellent. Now, the great thing is, you can see we have the turkey on a rock here. So it's really easy to take the turkey out. Look at that. Put it on a big tray here because I have to make the gravy. You know, everybody loves gravy. Yeah, it's know, gotta come next. I know how to make mashed potatoes out there. <laughs> Just add a lot of cream and butter to the potatoes and it will taste amazing. All right, here is our turkey. I just let it rest. So be sure when you cook the turkey at home, let it rest for at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes before cutting into it. Don't take it out and cut it. All the juices will run out and you will have a dry turkey. So when you cook meat, if it's a primary pork roast, turkey or chicken, let it rest, be sure, okay? But the star of the show here, the turkey, you know, we're gonna pair this with inspiration from Chateau de Bern. What I love about this wine is that, you know, it has that dry finish to it. It's going to really accentuate the juiciness of the turkey and still pair with all these different sides as well. So it's gonna bring out the sage notes uh, of chef's sage butter under the skin. We see some cranberry and the baked apples there, gonna bring out the spice, those kind of tart cranberry flavors as well. The yeah, matching of inspiration here to the Thanksgiving turkey will really kind of show how Provence Rosé uh, pairs so well. And so whether you're doing this for two people or for 20 people, this should be a, a great pairing for everybody. You know, it's a great pairing, but what I love about the rosé, you could roast on a Sunday night a chicken mm -hmm. or a pork roast and have the rosé with it. So you don't have to wait for Thanksgiving for it. Have it all the time. That's In my home, we have the rosé cold in the refrigerator all the time because California is really like Provence, you know? And mm. uh, you have the warm weather, it's dry, and so I think rosé goes really well with any kind of meat and also with fish. Like Absolutely. when I don't yeah. fish at home, I generally serve a rosé with it. Yeah, I think it's a great pairing. And Chef, you worked in Provence as well too, right? I worked for many years in Provence in, uh, at Beaumanier, one of the most amazing restaurants, you know? Mm -hmm. and our wine there was also rosé Provence. Of you course, know, Mr. yes. Mr. Chilia had his own vineyards and he made his own wine and I drank rosé because it's also affordable. Yes, very much so. You know, so. you don't mm -hmm. have to go to a store and buy white burgundy. It costs you $150 a, <laughs> a, uh, it costs you $150 a bottle. You right. know, and people really don't know. And this one, I think, I love the way the bottles, the way it's packaged, it's really mm -hmm. beautiful, it looks festive. But I think at the end, what's in the bottle is the most important thing. And you know what? I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't like it. Absolutely. And that's what's great about the Chateau de Bern Inspiration bottle too, as you mentioned, Chef. It's modeled after the, the two square towers of the estate. So when you look at Chateau de Bern, you know, just a beautiful estate that really brings that joie de vivre of the Provencal lifestyle right to your Thanksgiving or holiday table. So you can really bring some inspiration to your table, uh, no matter what you're serving for Thanksgiving. And you know, a lot of people don't know what to serve with that turkey. They always ask me, should I serve red wine? I said, you don't, you're not going to have to open Petrus or Lafitte with the turkey, you right. know, with all the different things. So you have to get a wine which goes with everything. And I think rosé is really great with a lot of things. You know, we always think we drink it in the summer, but 
the rosé here from Chateau de Bain really has a big bouquet and has really substance. You know, sometimes they are too light, but mm -hmm. this one is perfect. Yeah, it has that definitely combination of the, the body, the flavors of red wine with that amazing acidity, that crispiness of white wine. So yeah. it's going to pair really nice with everything. And it's rather complex for a rosé. Yes, absolutely. For me, Thanksgiving without a great pie is not really Thanksgiving. I have such a sweet tooth. So I could start actually with dessert first. So much I like them. Now, we have all kinds of pies. I know at home people make pumpkin pie, maybe apple pie. I do love pecan pie, and pecan pies are easy to do. Look at it, I have the filling right here. And all then you have to do is put the nicer pecans on top. Oh, oh it fits in perfectly. I, I thought I made too much. Here I have some beautiful pecans. So what I do then is arrange them on top. So that way you're gonna get a beautiful looking pie. What should we have with the dessert? Which one of your wines? Well, Chef, thanks for asking. So I've been looking at uh, you creating these desserts over here. And the one thing I always love about pairing wine with dessert is to make sure that the wine is a little bit drier than uh -huh. the dessert. You don't want to take it over. So that's why I think romance would be a great pairing because it has that delicious fruit there, but without being too overly fruity, without being too sweet. So yeah. maybe a little pour of this here. And especially for the, the chocolate, the red berries in this is really gonna uh, kind of pull out the chocolate in that flavor. The pumpkin, uh, sweet potatoes, all those kind of you know, different pies are gonna go really well. And even the baked apple, the kind of nice uh, baking spices, the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Romance is gonna be a, a, a great pairing with these desserts. Now, Chef, I know that uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday that you're doing some catering as well. What's going Absolutely. on uh, with, with the you Wolfgang know, Puck Empire there? If you don't want to cook at home, obviously the Bel Air is open. You can eat at the Bel Air, though we are sold out already there. But Wolfgang Puck Catering can cook for you if you are six people, eight people, or ten people in your own home for your family. I know we have COVID, so we have to be careful a little bit not to have too big of a party. Right, right. But we still have to celebrate life, you know? And what isn't better to celebrate Thanksgiving. We give thanks that we are all together, that we are all home. And you know what? When we celebrate, we need something good to drink. So cheers and Absolutely. happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Mm -hmm.